Good afternoon. This is Trip Harris back with another week of the Roar is Love. And uh, I'm just going to start out praying. I ask all you that are out there listening, they'd be praying for me too. I feel a little under the weather today, but I wanted to do this broadcast. And um, uh, Lord, again, uh, before I pray here, he dropped something on me. And, um, you know, two little things. So, uh, and I'm just going to give the best of some things I see always people struggling with and for a breakthrough and to encourage you today what I'm about to speak when I get done praying here. But Father, I thank you, Lord, for everyone that is listening in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I thank you as always, God. I pray for a healthy bride, a a bride that is healthy and full of fire, full of passion, full of love, doing your works, God, uh, through sonship to glorify you, God. Father, we just thank you today, Lord. Father, I pray for everyone listening, Lord, that's under the weather, from being under the weather through a terminal, terminal disease, whatever it is, Lord, it's not too big for you, Father. For those that are even in pain, God, pain, God, that is, it's a chronic pain. Even there's somebody out there that you've been diagnosed with a chronic pain and they said it's always going to be like this. So they're medicating you and the medication has got something that you've even bound, become addicted to because you can't live without it because you always live in pain. And, and, and the thoughts of you even coming off this is just, uh, is, is unheard of in your mind. You have uh, set in your mind that you're always going to be on this pain mess. And you've set in your mind you're always going to be in pain. But let me tell you something. We serve a big God and the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And I just pray today in the name of Jesus Christ, everyone that's dealing with chronic pain would be completely healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that your miraculous power would go forth, God. Father, that your healing virtue would take place and touch them in whatever parts it is from their back uh, to their knees, God. Lord, I thank you that backs are being healed right now. Knees are being healed right now. Lord, I thank you, Father. For those that's been diagnosed, Lord, even the neck, God, I thank you, Lord, that you're a big God and that you can do miracles, Lord. And, Father, we never want to put you in a box, God. So I thank you today, God, for healing your healing virtue going out in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for those that are suffering even the flu right now. Lord, I thank you, God, those that are under the weather, a complete healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke every fever right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Just as Jesus, you touch Peter's mother-in-law's hand and the fever lifted, uh, lifted, you can do the same right now. You can touch them, Jesus. One touch from you, the fever leaves. One touch from you, people are healed. One touch from you, pain leaves. Oh, we love you, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for a touch today, Lord, that would cause that pain to leave. And and today I'm feeling pain and fevers. Yeah. Yeah, like infections, Lord. Every infection be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Every infection that's gone forth. And there's people, some people from sinus infection uh, to bladder infections. uh, I'm just here right now to... All types of lung infections right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that that you heal them right now, God. And Father, that even go on the roars, love, trip Harris, Lord, and and, and just get on there and tell me what took place. Because I believe you today, God, that your healing virtue could touch them right where they're at. And everybody, Lord, that's been under, you know, it's one thing to be refined by the fire, Lord, that when you're testing us and... Uh, I mean, we're going through the fire to be, you know, purified, God, to be made more like you, transformed into your image, Lord. For those going through that, Lord, I thank you for grace. I pray supernatural grace, ocean loads of grace, grace coming from the north, grace coming from the south, grace coming from the east, grace coming from the west, just to overwhelm them, overtake them with your grace, Lord, that no matter what we're going through, that we can have joy unspeakable full of glory. We can have a peace that surpasses all understanding why the Prince of Peace lives in us and the Prince of Peace manifests through us. And in the flesh, we feel that peace, that shalom peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding, God. And those that are just on an outright assault of the enemy, I thank you for shutting down every assignment. Lord, your word talks about schemes and it talks about snares. It talks about pits. It talks about wiles, the fiery darts, Lord. And I thank you for every brother that every sister has been hit with a fiery dart, hit with a fiery dart. Soon as they think, and I just feel like you, some of you feel like 
you feel like, and I know every one of you know what I'm talking about, that, that those punching bags, those things when you got when you were a kid and, and you'd punch it, when you'd box on it, they'd get for children, and you'd punch it and it'd go down and swing right back up. It like had sand in the bottom and it was a rubber thing, and, and it would swing right back up. You'd hit it, and that's how you feel. You feel like you've been knocked down. As soon as you get back up, the enemy knocks you right back down. As soon as you get up, here comes another blow. As soon as you, uh, you get back on your feet, you feel like here's another fiery dart. Uh, and, and it's just caused you to grow so weary. You're just so tired. And I get it. I get it. I think if every saint would be honest. So we've all been through these seasons. And, and I'm just praying today, all the warfare in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for wisdom, Lord, for your sons and daughters that are listening, strategic wisdom, uh, who they need to forgive, what they need to do. Do they need to fast? How do they need to pray? Just give them, bless their enemy. What do they need to do, Lord, to shut down this assignment? Whatever assignment they're going for. I know that you have, a, if they would just inquire of you. And I just, many of you, if you would just begin to say, I pray for grace that you would get the strength and say, Lord, I'm inquiring of you. How do you want me to war? What do you want me to do, God? Do you want me just to soak in your prayers? Do you just want me to wake up, shut myself away and be silent and soak with worship music? Do you want me to begin to intercede like nobody's business? Do you want me to fast? What do you want me to do? Do you want me to take my enemy a present? I don't know. What do you want, God? But I promise you that there are strategic plans from heaven, just like the enemy comes, that we can make war back against him and we can break that thing. We can shut down that attack. We can silence by faith that fiery dart, knowing that God has you and that Everything that you're going through, you shall look more like Jesus on the other side if you stay strong. Listen, don't grow weary of doing good. Man, I feel this strongly. Don't grow weary of doing good for in the right time you shall reap a harvest. So I just bless you right now with grace, abundant grace. Triple grace, fire God, fresh passion, fresh touch. They've grown cold. They've grown so cold. They've grown so cold, Lord, that they're, they're, they're just ready to give up. They're weary. They're, they're, they're uh, wore down and feel beat up and just like I have. Some of you right now are saying, I have nothing left in me. I'm so close. I'm w to giving up. But I tell you right now, there is grace. Right now, there is power. Right now, there is fire. Right now, there is mercy. And I thank you for your mercy and your grace going forth and touching those and refreshing those. Times of refreshing of the Holy Spirit. If you just hang on, times of refreshing are even going to come to you many today. Even in the next 24 hours, if you cry out to God and say, Lord, I've grown weary. I didn't even know how tired I was, Lord. And I, I quit talking to you. I quit. Quit praying. I quit talking to you, soaking, praying, reading the word of God. I have just been doing my own thing, Lord, because I was so tired. And many of you, listen, many of you have come to a season that you're like, and, and I get it. You know, I felt like the Lord showed me, and I and I bless you in Jesus' name. I put these prayers. I'm gonna tell you something. Many of you, and this is not what I thought I'd talk about, but many of you, I know where you're at. You, you begin to pull people out of the fire. You begin to pull people out of hell. You begin to minister to those souls, people that are broken and, and that no one will minister to. The church is just tossed to the side. They've cast them away and, and, and they are the misfits. But you begin to minister. You go for those people. You love the broken and the down and out and the addicted and the prostitutes. And you begin to minister to get down in dirt with them. And you pull them out of hell and all, and, and all hell comes against you, you feel like. And it's like the devil said, you become gun shy. You know, I had a friend. He was one of the best athletes um, I ever knew. Matter of fact, I played ball with a Jeremy Simpson and a Shane Simpson. Well, Jeremy Simpson ended up getting Mr. Football in the state of Kentucky his senior year. I, I was playing with him my whole life. And his cousin Shane was on the same level. But his cousin Shane took a hit. He took a hard hit in the game. I'll never forget. And when he did, it made him gun shy and he could never play the game right again. Matter of fact, when he got to high school, he just quit. Now, he would never, uh, in, you know, I don't know if he'd ever admit to that or, you know, know that's what happened. But he took such a hit. He was blindsided so hard that he never, it took the love of the game away from him. It took it out. He was gun shy of another hit. And that's what I feel like the devil does to us sometimes, that we're in the game and we're going hard and we're menacing for the Lord. We're dead smack in the middle of the game and boom, we take a hard shot. And the enemy lies and says, if you'll shut your mouth, if you'll just back off, if you'll leave this, per excuse me, this person alone, you will not have to go under the warfare that you're going through. 
but I'll leave you alone. But the devil is a liar. You do what God says. Always do what the Lord says. And I'm praying fresh. I pray that you would be encouraged. I pray for wisdom. And yes, use wisdom on where you're supposed to minister at and where you're not supposed to minister. At. And another thing I'm feeling really strong and, and uh, is some of you, my God, you have really planted you have planted seeds you have watered you have labored in other people's backyards i don't don't hear what i'm not saying a backyard we're talking about the kingdom of god right and it's not about a man or it's not about a woman's harvest it's not about a man saying look at me i'm in my ministry and but there is a place that where god you get a harvest for your labor and and many of you have went in places and you've preached and you teach and you've been doing deliverance and you have really poured out and you've seen lives completely changed even by this. And you see the other people, it seems like receiving the harvest, receiving the blessings. And you're over here struggling, yet they they might, you know, get a blessing, uh, you know, su such a blessing that you knew came behind you pouring into that harvest. And that and, and on their foundation, you know, Jesus is the foundation, but you go on their place and you begin to minister and you're a hidden face and, and, and you see them. My God, I don't know what this is about. So many of you say even you've been in a spot where you have been a, a disciple of someone or pouring into their life. You stood for a while when they were suicidal. They were ready to give up, but you stood shoulder to shoulder with them and you picked them up from the ground. You wiped their tears. You prayed over them. You blessed them and you stood there for them and you didn't give up on them. Now all of a sudden they're shining like new money. The manifestation of Christ is glowing through them. They're operating and moving in, the, in God's kingdom and, and, the, and, and people's lives are being changed. And then you see them tell a person that, you know, for a fact, didn't even stand there. But because they've got a good name in the community. Oh, God, you you got to hear me. Uh, they've got a good name in the community. They've got a good name in, in the church. Uh, they're known by people. I couldn't have made it without Tommy. Well, I couldn't have made it without Jimmy. And well, I couldn't have made it without Kevin. Yet you've been a part of this and, and labored and sold and planted and spent hours and, and rebuking and commanding and, and, and fasting and praying. And you've seen these lives change. Yet you see someone else get the credit. My God. Well, listen to me. I want to say something. Nothing you do is in vain. It's not about you getting credit. I, I felt like the Lord, this even happened to me now that I'm talking about it one time. I witnessed this in my life and things where I poured into a brother and gave my all and knew through the warfare that God used me through fasting and praying for them. They didn't even know it and really standing for them. And, 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 and see them now today blessed and flourishing. Give someone else the credit. And you're like, what in the world? And I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, how do you think I feel? And it wasn't that we want to pat on the back, but we're only human. And at times we're like, what in the world, man? Are you, you're just, your mind's blown. You're like, are you kidding me? What'd you do? Talk to that person like three times to tell a joke and walk off and, and you couldn't have made it without them. And that's how your mindset is. But the Lord says, how do you think I feel? They're giving another man glory for what I did. How do you think I feel, son? How do you think I feel, daughter, that it's really, it's me working through you. It's not about me or you. It's God that gets the glory. It's God that gets the praise. It's God that works through us. It's God, God, God that does it by the Holy Spirit through us. And he's not getting the glory that's due to him. He deserves all glory. He deserves all honor. He deserves all praise. Not you, not me, not no one. But you can get your feelings hurt sometimes when you see these things. But I want to encourage you, you know, you, where you've been planting someone else's ministry, the God's going to, so I don't know who this is, but God's about to give you your own foundation. God's about to give you your own territory. God's about to give you your own church. Oh, wow. I'm telling you right now, you got to hear me. I don't know who you are, but God's about to give you that church. You've been wondering, God, am I supposed to plant this church? God, is this really my destiny? God, what is? Yes, you are. I don't know who you are, but yes, and that's confirmation for someone. Someone just got confirmation. Yes, you're supposed to. And I'm going to tell you something. God's hand is going to come upon that place and it's going to be fruitful and it's going to flourish in the glory. It's going to be a presence based church and that place is going to be full of the addicted that place is going to be full of the prostitutes that's going to be full of the broken and god is going to move my god i feel the holy ghost god is going to move in the midst of you truly you will say jesus 
uh, it'll be so glorious that other people I see right now, I can see that there's people in the church and one person's getting touched and another person's getting touched over here. And, and you know that God's moving because you can feel Jesus in the atmosphere. Lord, pass not by me. Oh, Lord, don't pass by me. You'll hear people literally, God, don't pass by me. You're in this place. God, I'm desperate to God. Please touch me. And you'll see that person get the breakthrough also. There's Because God's not going to pass nobody in that church up. God's going to uh, touch every heart that's in that assembly. Oh, God. God's going to touch every heart that is in that assembly. Every, You know what, man? This makes me want to go to... Uh, guys, if, if, if you got a Bible or if you're listening, I'm going to take you... Let me see here. Let's go to 2 Samuel. I'm going to go to 2 Samuel chapter 15 even. And I want to read something to you. Because many of this has even had this... Uh, 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 happen to you. And, and, and I want to stick this up. So let me finish this before I do this. This is something else that's coming so quickly that, that you, you are to plant your church. Yes, you are. As you plant and as you sow, you're going to see the increase. You're going to see the harvest. You're going to see the blessings coming back on your own head and on the people that's in your assembly. And God's about to move. And it will be a presence-based church. It will be known for people that don't judge you, people that got your back, people that love you. It will be known for the love of God and the power and the fire of God. There will be healings, uh, not only physical, but spiritually and emotionally. But there will be many physical healings. Wow, I, wow. Church for the broken. That's what I'm hearing right now. Oh, please, if there's anybody that this is right now making sense, please go on Trip Harris, uh, The Roar is Love, and look me up. Look me up on Facebook, Owensboro, Kentucky, and please share this with me. I feel this very strongly. Church for the broken. That's what I hear. And I don't know if it'll be like a hub or a, a, a church, but it will be assembly and a gathering. And there will be like two or three that are, are, are partners with you that's going to go shoulder to shoulder with you. And the fire and the power of God's even going to be released. Wow. Now, this is the next, uh, I feel like, as this came to me as I was speaking, the next person that we're dealing with here is this. In chapter 15 of Samuel, I'm going to read something. Let me see where it starts here. Uh, this is some people that feel this way. You feel like you've been betrayed this way. And I've even seen this myself. And it, it's amazing on what how people do this. But let me show you something. In, in 2 Samuel chapter 15, it says, Absalom then brought, but Absalom, if you don't know, was the son of King David, okay? His son. Absalom then bought a, a magnificent chariot and chariots and horses and hired 50 footmen to run ahead of him. He got up early every morning and went out to the gate of the city. And when anyone came to uh, bring a case to the king for trial, Absalom called him over and expressed interest in his problem. He would say, hey, I can see that you are right in this matter. It's unfortunate that the king doesn't have anyone to assist him. My. And here in these cases, I surely wish I were the judge. Then anyone with a lawsuit could come to me and I would give him justice. And when anyone came to bow to him, Absalom would let him, uh, would let him and but shook his hand instead. So in this way, Absalom stole the hearts of all the people of Israel. And if you go on reading this story, you'll see where Absalom won the people and he ended up taking David, his daddy's kingdom and kingdom. And David was ran out even from his own kingdom, his own son, because of the envy, because of the jealousy, because of pride. And he sneaks in and he takes David kingdom, but it was a spirit that was on upon Absalom. And this spirit is prevalent in the church today, the spirit of Absalom. But here's what I'm going to say about that. The Lord showed me something about this. Okay, so I've seen this, and I'm going to give two examples. In churches even, where people come in and they've got a call on their life, and they come into another man's body, and they begin to minister in there and begin to pray with people and begin to gossip and begin to slander. Well, you know, Pastor Donnie, he, you know, if I could do it, I could do a much better job. And, well, he ain't got time, and Donnie's busy. Man, I'm telling you, if I was the preacher here, if I was the pastor, I would do things a different way. I'd be visiting Susie at the hospital. I would have been to your husband's funeral. I wouldn't have left you sick like that. I would have even had my wife bring you pot stew over you know chili to your house we would have spent time with your children we would have had many more outings and many more cookouts even we would have got together and we would have went to the park and we would have uh, roasted hot dogs and hamburgers and we would have got to know each other 
But see, this is not a right motive. It's not a right attention. He's trying to steal another man's kingdom. Now we know it's the kingdom of God, but he's wanting to steal another man's platform. The platform is not about a man, but you hear what I'm saying. And he wants to steal it. So through manipulation and trickery, he gets that man's church and the pastor is voted out. Then he begins to pastor. But what the Lord showed me was this. If it ain't your position, if it ain't your platform, if it ain't your kingdom, if it's not, you can't keep it. Absalom absolutely died behind this. Absalom, it was never meant. It was the position and the anointing was for King David. That anointing to be king of Israel was for King David, not Absalom. Now, later on, maybe, and there's other people that might try to go before their time. God has a position. God has a calling. God has something special for you, but you can't wait, and you're so zealous that you get your heart wrong because you can't wait, and you try to take someone else's kingdom. Oh, God, you got to hear me. Oh, wow. Wow. And this is going on so much in the body right now that people have done this and pastors have been drove out and it was for their anointing. But the people, the Absaloms that took this position will not stand. They will fall because they don't have the anointing to do it. It was not their time. Whether they just robbed and it wasn't or whether they left before, uh, went before their time, they will not have the anointing to fulfill this and to succeed at this thing. They will not have the anointing to succeed at this in their kingdom. What they thought they were getting was really, uh, what they were really is a lot of warfare. What they were getting was a fall. They're going to be so embarrassed. They're going to be ashamed. They're going to be brought to nothing. That church will not flourish. That church will not be fruitful because the man that is snuck in there or the woman that is snuck in in positions, it was not from the anointing for that it was for someone else. And you know what? It's sad and, and, and it's so sad and, and, and again, this ain't about platforms and kingdoms, but this is God does position you and give you a place and, and you have a certain anointing, you have a certain gift. And in God, as he sees fit, he puts people where he wants if we're in the will of God. And it's not about the man's glory. It's about God's glory. But people come in and do this. And, you know, and I think about let me see something here. It just can't, you know, let me see this. This came to my mind, too. And uh, but but here's what I'm saying. Do not be discouraged. Listen. Whoever's listening to me, if this has ever happened to you or someone you know, do not, do not be discouraged. And even if you say, say, I heard someone uh, on the radio and they told me. So if you know someone, go to them. If you've ever witnessed this and tell them, I feel strongly about this, that if they continue to serve, continue to serve God, continue to press in God, because that person is going to fall. And that David came back, got his kingdom back and ruled. And the very last thing that was said about David was this. David fulfilled God's purpose in his generation and went to sleep with his forefathers. You will fulfill God's purpose. You will fulfill God's destiny. And you have got to forgive those people and bless those people and that, because the enemy wants you to get mad and become critical and cynical. And, and before you know it, a root of bitterness it takes up and it chokes you out and you've got unforgiveness in you and you're not fruitful anymore. You're not flourishing anymore. You're not walking mainly in the glove of God. You're going through the motions, but there's no passion there. There's no oil there. There's no fire there. There's no power there. And let me tell you something. The Absalom, King David's son, end up losing his life behind it. Now, I'm not saying people are going to die, but I'm telling you, it will be shut down. He will not reign on another man's kingdom. You know, I've seen people. Let me see something real quick. You guys uh, stick with me. This came too, and I'm going to be finishing up. But this came to my mind too. As we were sitting there, here's another thing that I feel like is going on with a lot of people right now. Uh, I'm going to go, if you want to, go to Genesis chapter 37. And this is what I feel like the Lord is saying today, okay? And I'm going to pray for you real fast. But and I'm going to make this quick. But uh, uh, it started, 37 chapter of Genesis says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. And it goes, These are the great generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 year old, was feeding the flock with his brother and the lad was with his sons Bilaha, with his son Zelpha, and his father and wives. Joseph brought him to his father's uh, an evil report. But it, verse 3 says, Now Israel, this is where I want to start. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age, in his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more and then all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him yet more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you this, dream which I have dreamed. For behold, 
we were uh, binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, you, your sheaves stood around about and made uh, to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made made it to me, absence to me. And he told it to his father. And to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and my mother and thy brethren indeed come bow down ourselves, uh, ourselves to the earth for you? And it says his brother envied him, but his father observed, saying, and his brethren to feed their father. Okay, so so Joseph is uh He's a younger, he's younger than them. And he comes on the scene and the other brothers have labored with dad and been a part of, been with dad a lot longer. And all of a sudden he comes in as a younger brother. And, you know, and, and I feel like, you know, I've never said this, but just picture the, the coat of many colors. It represents favor. He favored his younger son because he had him in his old age. And all of a sudden his older brothers are like, are you kidding me? I've been with you for your dad's laboring in the fields. All of a sudden, he's going to come up. You're going to make him a coat. You favor him more and love him more than us. So jealousy sets in. But see, there was a call on Joseph's life. My God, you got to hear me. There was such a call on his life. It, there was such a call on Joseph's life that 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 he he was seeing before and he cast his vision before him. he cast his dream before them and they hated on him and they came against it so many and i know you've probably heard this spoke today but this is for somebody the lord raised you up and he put his favor on you he put his anointing on you and you begin to flourish and there were people in the church and there were people around you that had been there for years deacon and elders and so many people all of a sudden god's hands upon you and you're coming up and god's using you in such a oh somebody i'm preaching to somebody and using you in such a mighty way and, and then envy and jealousy comes in how can this young guy come in and be walking in this love walking in this joy getting these words from heaven preaching like this teaching like this how can he know the word of god like this how can he have so much of fire and, and and glory be upon his life have i not been in this church forever have i not ministered forever in this church listen you need to really use wisdom Whoever, when God gives you something, uh, like the son, uh, the, uh, sons of Issachar, we need to know the times. We need to know the seasons, when to cast our dreams, when to cast our visions. Who do we cast them to? For if the enemy hears them, then he can use people to come against you through jealousy, through envy, through pride. And we can get ourselves in unnecessary warfare. I'm not saying Joseph did. Some would say he told it too early and stuff. I believe it was all of God's plan. But some of us, and, and just how it rolled out was perfect. But I'm going to tell you something. Some of us can be found guilty doing this because there's so much zeal and there's so much fire. And God's anointed your life in such a way. He's put so much favoritism on you that people are going to see it and they're going to come against you. But the good news is, my God, just like David didn't lose his kingdom for long. and He reigned and ruled and ended well with God. So did Joseph. Joseph became second under Pharaoh in the country. God used him, gave him so much wisdom that he, he saved during a famine and a whole nation was fed. Even his family came back to him and the prophecy came true. Listen, I don't care how they try to come against a prophetic word in your life. If God has prophesied to you, if God's gave you a dream about your future and it truly come from heaven, I don't care if all hell comes against it. Every Tom, Dick, Harry comes against it. You shall fulfill your calling and your destiny. If it is God, God will watch over that work and he will perform it until the day he will dispatch his angels to oversee you to see you fulfill your call and your destiny be not discouraged get up dust yourself off and press into god and forgive those people wow that just i didn't uh wow Wow. So I'm going to pray real quick. Time's about up. I could go on and on. And I, I really feel an anointing for this. And some people are really struggling right now with this. So Father, I thank you for everyone here in Lord. If they were done wrong in one way, if they were a pastor and they were voted out because someone came in with an Absalom spirit. If another person is just coming up, God, and they got to, like Joseph, they're younger in the church, but you have put a mantle on them and anointed on them and your favor upon them to do things. And, and the people that have been in the church forever and serving are coming against it because of jealousy and envy. I thank you for that younger person to have wisdom, when to cast a dream, when to cast a vision, to do it precisely in the right time, to be right as precisely in the right place and to be encouraged no matter what comes against them. They shall fulfill their calling. They shall fulfill their destiny. And I thank you that everyone in 
the sound of my voice will fulfill God, every one of you. I pray over you right now in the name of Jesus that you shall fulfill your calling. You shall fulfill your destiny and God's purpose in your life. And you will do it full of love. Corinthians 13, full of the love of God, full of the fire of God, full of the power of God. And many lives will be changed. Be encouraged. Forgive those folks. Get up. Dust yourself off. And if you're any in any two of these camps. And dust yourself off and move forward because surely God is going to fulfill it in your life. Be not dismayed. Until this time next week, love you.